Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. How are you doing, Loop? You okay? It's good to see you. My name is uh, SK Shlomo, and today I'm going to give you a kind of performative presentation. So it's going to be a mixture of me talking to you and like bearing the deepest parts of my soul in the gaps. So is that okay with you? Does that sound good? Yeah, good. All right, nice, man. So uh, let me take, talk to you a little bit. Today I would love to talk to you about what I call the path of most resistance. Uh, now, I am a producer, singer, beatboxer, looper, and human being, and I've noticed that we human beings have a tendency to suffer the familiar rather than face our fears of the unknown. But before I get all deep on you, uh, I feel like I could tell you my story. Um, I'm going to tell you my story. So this is a loop station, right? A loop station is a very simple device that enables you to loop any audio. Loop any audio. Loop any audio. Audio. This is the finals of the first ever World Loop Station Championships in Los Angeles. Uh, so I'm from the UK. I entered the UK heats of this event for a little bit of fun and maybe to meet some fellow looping geeks. Uh, but here I am on stage at the World Finals, uh, anxiously waiting to hear who is going to be crowned as the first ever World Loop Station champion. But I feel like I'm getting ahead of myself. Let, my, let me tell my story right from the beginning. Uh, when I was eight years old, my parents bought me a drum kit for my birthday. And do you know what they said to me? They said, son, happy birthday. We give in, we'll buy you the drum kit, but please don't play it, right? So I wasn't allowed to practice my drums at times that might annoy the neighbors. So I had to find ways to express the rhythms in my heart in a kind of quite quiet way. And I kind of accidentally discovered what I later found out would be called beatboxing. Because I love doing it, the, the idea of putting in all the hours and weeks of, of kind of training to master this art form, they just, for me, that was like, it was the path of zero resistance. I just loved doing it so much, I did it everywhere I went and annoyed the hell out of everybody. But it meant that I could express music anywhere I went, which, is, which was such a special thing for me at that age. It didn't take me long to realize that this beatboxing thing could uh, impress my friends and also get me free fries, uh, which is... Always helpful. This song is called Close My Eyes, because like this. Good to 
be the war or the green light. When I lie here with you, I close my eyes. As this time lapse with you, the world is mine. When I lie here with you, I close my eyes. I close my eyes. Yeah. So this is, if we go back to the slides, this is international hip-hop group Foreign Beggars. By the age of 19, I found myself traveling sweaty, sweaty hip-hop clubs all around the world with these guys. And every night they bring me out and I kind of beatbox a bunch of my favorite um, hip-hop tunes of the time. Let me see, it was all like... Um Thank you. So I was having a really good time. Um, uh, but I never really saw uh, the beatboxing as anything more than just a kind of trick, you know? People were, seemed to be super impressed by it, uh, and I was getting more than free fries by this point. Um, but I never really kind of thought anything else of it. It was just fun, you know? Um, and then one day, I got a phone call from the Icelandic superstar Björk asking me to beatbox on an all-vocal album that she was making. Um, I was super excited, as you can tell from my facial expression. But working with Bjork kind of inspired me to take myself a little bit more seriously. I saw what she was doing and I thought, man, I could be like her. I could be, uh, you know, an independent artist who writes and sings and performs something that's true in their heart, right? But then I just felt this fear boiling from my belly. I thought if I wanted to do that, that would take like months and weeks and years of work on my unacknowledged insecurities about not being good enough as like a singer or a writer or whatever. Just, sound, just felt way too scary to even think about. But then um, not long after that, I saw somebody on YouTube layering up their voice with a loop pedal. And I thought, that sounds cool, mate. Like, I kind of got obsessed with the idea of creating an orchestra of myself live on stage. Um, and it just felt like a kind of not too scary way for me to start making music of my own or in my own style, um, but still stay kind of impressive and exciting and dynamic and engaging. But with the goal to kind of stop doing those hip hop covers and start making my own thing. So uh, 
I went home, well, I went back and bought this uh, really simple loop station, took it home and I memorized all the functions. I kind of read the manual back to front and then I found all the things that it, it, it wasn't supposed to do, all the glitches and the little bugs and the errors. And I worked those into my show so I could start making kind of freaky music in a way that other people hadn't really thought of yet. Uh, and before long, I'd been around the world for a second time. Uh, this time I was making music in, in my own uh, style, you know. <laughs> I'm kind of getting distracted. Let's get back to the story. Let's get back to the World Loop Station Championships. Uh, yes, I did win them. But uh, thank you. But what, what changed everything was that now I was world champion. Um, all the kind of music tech companies started sending me all their latest kind of bits of kit to try out. And I was loving this. I was so excited. I could do so much more now, right? I just kept wanting more, though, like more power, more effects, more machines. Um, and there can be such a thing as too many toys, right? Give someone too many toys and they stop kind of doing any meaningful play. They're just kind of masturbating around with the toys. Um, so for me, this is what I would describe as a technical mess. I was starting to have all kinds of problems with like sound degradation and um, ah, like latency and I don't know, like uh, everything was trying to synchronize via MIDI and I was just spending more time like fighting my machines than I was just creating and expressing. Uh, and I thought, you know what I need to do? I need to start again, right? I need to just throw all of this kit away uh, and start from scratch. And this time I'm gonna build this beast myself because all of these things, a lot of them were just workarounds for something I wanted to make it do. So then you've got this massive piece of kit that can do loads of other shit, but you're only using one function on it. And it just, I wanted to make it myself, right? I needed to make my own customized software looping instrument. How the hell do you do that? <laughs> I have no idea. So uh, 
I found this thing called Max for Live. Who here knows about Max for Live? Yeah, good. Lots of people know about Max for Live. I would expect that at a conference like this. Uh, but if anyone doesn't know what Max for Live is by now, Max is a visual programming language, right? And it's aimed at people like us. It's aimed at musicians. Uh, and with Max for Live, you can build anything you can imagine. You can create instruments, effects, uh, like sequences, visualizers, anything that you can think of, you can build it. Uh, and the, the endless possibilities are completely overwhelming, especially if, like me, you've never done any code before. Um, how many people here have coded software before? Yeah, quite a few people. And how many people have never even touched software, just wouldn't even... Yeah, okay, and that was kind of where I started. Like, when I was a teen, my brother handed me a textbook this thick called Teach Yourself Visual C++. And I was just like, now, nah, mate, I'm going to go play my drums at a gig where there'll be girls. Um, <laughs> But you know what? I realized all this time, it was actually just fear. I would have loved to be like my brother and understand what was really happening inside the computer, but I was just afraid. Um, so I realized nobody was going to build this machine for me. I was going to have to start right at the beginning, and I was going to have to be awful at it to start with, right? So at first, I couldn't even make it do anything. I just, like, you've just got a blank page. You don't even know what, like, you just don't know anything, right? So I spoke to some gurus, right? Some Max for Live Jedis. There's a guy out in Texas called Nate Crapo, who has a collective called Bit Voltage. Uh, and there's a guy called uh, Mark Towers, who created this famous arcade series for Isotonic. Um, so these guys are like Max for Live. They're Yoda, basically. And they kind of gave me some Skype lessons and just showed me the very, very basics so I could get started. And after about two weeks of like basically crying into the laptop, I had this moment where I suddenly understood the joy of programming. I understood what my brother had been on about all those years ago. Because when you've been fighting for literally days to make one single LED light up and you achieve it, it's just such a good feeling, man. And it's, it's addictive. You get this little buzz and you think, right, I want that buzz again. So you go for the next thing on your list of, of features and goals that you're trying to achieve. And uh, from that moment, that kind of fear of the unknown just faded away. From this point forwards, it, it had become what I would describe as a path of zero resistance for me. In other words, I became obsessed, right? I remember taking a flight to Mexico, a 10-hour flight from London to Mexico. The guy next to me sat there and watched five movies. In that time, I just sat there like coding my face off and I kind of created the basis of my looping machine that I was trying to build. So let me show you how the machine works. This is, this is her. I call her Beast uh, and it's, mo most of the work is done uh, with Push2. Uh, who knows about Push2? Good. Uh, Push2 you will know as a powerful MIDI controller. Um, but I've hacked it using Max for Live, which I didn't realize you could do. You can change the way Push works from the inside out, um, alongside with these um, little Akai pad controllers. And what I did was I created a series of either brand new or kind of adapted Max for Live devices with the goal of um, emulating my original hardware, okay? Um, so the first thing I wanted to do was to create a multi-channel looper. Um, Ableton ships with a device called Looper. Anybody use that before? Anybody use that little device? It comes with Ableton. It's really, it's really cool. It's kind of an emulation of a simple stomp box looper. But it's single channel, so you can't have like, more, more than one layer. You can, you can layer as many voices up as you want in it, but you can't bring, out, bring stuff in and out like you can with a multi-looper. So I was using a hardware multi-looper before this, which is called the Boss RC505. This has five channels of looping. Um, if this doesn't make any sense to anyone, let me just try and explain what I mean by multi-channel. So when you're live looping, you start with channel one like... So that's just gone into channel one. So that's a hi-hat. I might put a bass line in like... That's in channel two. I might do some more stuff on three like... Okay, so I've got four channels here, and they're separate, right? So, and it means you can like, so I could do, I could put an effect just on that channel. 
Or like I could reverse. Or like maybe I wanted to reverse the one of them. Like it just gives you the freedom to separate your information and process it differently in real time. And most importantly, I can see what all four, all five of those loopers are doing at any one time, whether they're recording, overdubbing, looping, or stopped. I can see all of that without having to mess about with the mouse and make the audience think I'm checking my fucking Facebook, okay? So, you can't do that with this. You can't do that with a single looper device. So I thought maybe I should just put five instances of looper on five different Ableton channels, right? Surely that would be easy, but apparently not. A, a looper is, is an unusual device in that it's not very configurable. You can't even MIDI map all the functions. You definitely can't really mess about with it too much. Um, so the only way to do it, to get visual feedback, was to use Max for Live. Um, and so what I did was I uh, got this push. Push was the kind of answer to my questions. I started out using an iPad. I thought maybe I'd control it using an iPad. Um, but I realized when I perform, I actually don't look at the kit that much. I'm kind of using my, my sense of touch to feel which buttons I'm pressing. So I had to play with some hardware controllers until I found Push. Um, and then it was just a matter of trying to get inside the hood of Push. So this is the my, my kind of main device that I built first. It's push looper is what I called it. It means you can get inside the buttons of push, kind of take over them and change how they work. So this looks relatively tidy. This is kind of like the landing page, like the table of contents. But each one of these, you see these kind of colored little boxes. Each one of them is a sub patcher. So you open that up and you can see the code inside. Let's have a look. So push looper is where it interacts with the actual buttons along the bottom of my machine here. So that's a sub patcher inside there is more code with more sub patches. Uh, and inside this sub patcher is where the real uh, kind of communication is happening. So I've got I'm monitoring what all, four, all five of those loopers are doing. And that is feeding back into the buttons on loop and vice versa. So you can kind of observe and control at the same time. And this is where it turns into a bit of a spaghetti junction of information. Um, so, another thing I wanted to do was get rid of my Chaos Pad. Chaos Pad is, if you don't know, is like a, a hardware effects unit with a lovely touch screen that you can do X, Y, so you can control two effects at once. Um, so I wanted to emulate that and have that all happen inside the software. So I used um, an Ableton controller called Touchable, which is an iPad uh, app, which also has an X, Y controller on it. So just finding these little kind of emulations was a really good starting point for me to start learning how to code and start building and, and creating in, an, in a kind of, like when you're trying to learn, if you just try and learn lesson one and then lesson two, then lesson three, I just find that so boring, it doesn't engage. But if there's something you specifically want to do, it's so much easier to learn because you're trying to find out how to do one specific thing, it's really satisfying. So, um, yeah, a lot of my code was basically stolen and bastardized from other people's work. You, you probably know this, but Max for Live is fully open source. So if, if you find any Max for Live device, you can hack it, you can see the code inside, you can borrow it, you can steal it, you can learn from it. Um, for example, I wanted to create uh, a button that would grab the incoming audio and immediately turn that into a playable kind of synthesizer. So I hacked uh, Granulator 2, which is Robert Henker's like, famous Max for Live device, probably the most complex Max, the Max for Live device I've seen. Um, and I've just kind of messed about a bit with the way it works, but the, the fundamentals are all exactly the same. But what I wanted to do was be able to sample anything and play it. So like, for example, can you all just go like, woohoo, ready, go. Woo! You might want to show the screen now, actually. Hang on. You can show my laptop screen. Also. That's quite fun. Um, but let's try another one. Let's try everybody. Um, can you all just whistle? Like, can you all just go like, ready, go. Someone was out of tune. Get up. I'm just joking. Like that could be quite a cool thing to use. Like I don't know, just like new ways to create sounds and new um, 
techniques really to just try and push your vocabulary into a new place. Um, and there's one other thing I really wanted to create, which was uh, like a one-shot machine. If you pop back to the slides for me, uh, like I wanted to be able to grab, this is the code for my one-shot machine. I wanted to be able to grab sounds, and then I've turned this right-hand bank of buttons on push into like this little one-shot sampler. So if you'll just go, um, after three, just go, ah, oh, yeah, one, two, three. Ah, oh, yeah, ah, oh, yeah, ah, yeah, ah, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Let's do a few more. I'm going to make a little tune of it. Can you go like, whoop, whoop, ready, ready, go. Whoop, 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 Okay, now I need some like, like a, ooh, ready, eh. Yeah, I need like a, ah, ready, ah. Okay, now I just need some like, uh, melodic stuff. I need like a, ah, ready, eh. Guys, that was, that was. Terrible. Much, much louder. Ready? Go. Yeah, that's much better. And then like a... Ready? Go. And then like, what can we do for the last one? Like, what should we do as our last little finishing thing for this? What's been like the... What's been the like fundamental emotion you guys have felt at loop this year? Should we just shout loop? Should we just start? Loop is awesome. Ready? After three. Like we're just going to go... Loop is awesome! Ready? One, two, three, go! Loop is awesome! <laughs> Really good fun. Like I could never find hardware that would be able to do that on that kind of level. So for me, finding uh, a way to do that and express those ideas I had was just really special to me. Um, so after like six months of just sitting in my studio coding, uh, Beast was just about stable enough to risk taking out in public, which I did uh, at a, a TEDx event. It was a very stupid idea. I hadn't even taken it into public ever. I hadn't tried the thing out. And I did it at a TEDx event in 2016. Uh, it went pretty well, actually. Like the laptop was having a bit of a nightmare. So if you watch the TED talk, you can hear the CPUs like popping and clicking all the way through, which I've solved now by just getting a f uh, quad core machine so it's coping a bit better it still freaks out all the time but um, it went really well to be honest with you it went really really well so then I spent the next six months traveling with the machine uh, took it to um, Ibiza uh, Glastonbury and other shows around the world as Moscow Mexico America um, and, but you know what I actually felt super frustrated by this point um, I kind of realized, I don't know, like I was only just scratching the surface of what's possible with man versus machine. And it felt like kind of my, my amateur code was kind of held together with like digital sticky tape. It was only just working all the time and it was super stressful. What I really needed to do was like delete everything again, burn the whole thing again and start from scratch. Now I knew what I was doing. But that just felt really daunting. You know, I could easily spend another year or two or 10 years like just making it way more efficient and stable and like way sicker. But that just didn't feel, it just felt really daunting and scary again. And like, ah, I was like, you know what? I realized something in that whole 12 months, I hadn't written a single new song in the studio. I just had been ignoring that itch of wanting to be a songwriter and a producer and a singer, which is deep down what I'd always dreamed of doing. And I thought, do you know what I think I might be doing, guys? I think I might be procrastinating for England, you know? Spending a whole year dedicating my life, building these functions, building the, spending months and months building these functions. But I'm thinking, am I just doing this so I look clever, you know? Like, so that people think I'm cool. And like, what am I really hiding from? So I'm sitting there thinking, you know what? I remember when I first did that session with Bjork and I thought, I want to be like her. And I'd kind of ignored that horrible feeling. You know that when you've got that feeling that you just ignore it? I don't know. I've been, uh, I've kind of had a battle with, with mental health problems my whole adult life. And it really is, uh, I feel like it becoming an endemic problem in musicians and creatives. And a really big issue is that um, 
we don't feel like we can talk about it. We don't feel like we can admit that we are struggling. And um, I know I'm 34 years old. I'm only just at the point now where I feel like I can share the fact that I'm, I'm not okay a lot of the time. Um, and it becomes really easy to listen to that voice in your head telling you that you are not good enough, right? You're not good enough as a singer. You're not good enough as a producer. Like, look at all these people doing all this amazing shit, and this is all you can come up with. You are not good enough. Uh, and that's a horrible, horrible thing to say to anybody, let alone to yourself. Like, you're not being kind to yourself. So you have this instinct to just stick to what feels what, what feels easy, you know, what's going to definitely get a reaction or, like, get you some money or whatever it is. Uh, so for me, that was the beatboxing and the live looping and the creating these uh, engaging audience experiences. Yes, I was doing lots of work there. I was, I, after that TED Talk, I was going all over the world doing it, but I wasn't really being true to myself as an artist. So you know what I did? I turned off the machines and I sat down with my manager and we took a really scary step. We uh, cancelled everything. For the next two years, we cancelled all of our commitments. Uh, and we said, from now on, we are only going to take on projects that contribute to this album that I want to make, right? So if, if, we, if someone proposes something to us and it can help, great. If not, we'll say, thank you very much. We'll do that another time. Um, and that is a fucking scary thing to do. Uh, so then I sat down at the piano uh, with no machines and nothing standing in the way of me achieving my lifelong goal, okay? Dream come true, dream come true, true. I can't even speak. Dream come true, right? Apparently not. I found myself after about three or four weeks locked in the studio, just had a full on mental breakdown, like crippling anxiety. Like I couldn't eat or sleep or I definitely couldn't work. Um, and I realized it's this fear inside. Like for me, I'm a control freak. If I can do a show, I love it because I'm in control. I can control everything about this situation. Well, not everything, but enough to feel like I can give it my most, right? If I'm going to make a demo, I'm fine with that because I can control who's going to listen to it. Uh, it's the same if I'm going to write music for other people. I do it all the time. It's great fun. I can control that. But if you want me to make a final recording of my voice singing my song and release that to the world for everybody to kind of take their control of and decide what they want to think of it and possibly hate it, like, that is fucking scary. So I realized something. I realized this is my path of most resistance because it's something I've been resisting my entire life. This is the future. I can see you can find yourself What you want, you always get Take a breath, the heart can beat For a second, you feel complete Today is the day we would meet all we gave to be complete But she'll always say There's no love without pain Today is the day we would meet All the years, all the tears that came Even then we'll be waiting day When I look at you all I can see the future and it won't so beautiful When I look at you all oh, I can see the future And it won't so beautiful And it won't so beautiful Cause you don't know what I know And you can't know where we'll go What I said It's over, it's over ah, 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 ah. When I look at you all I can see the future And it burns so beautiful Is it burns so beautiful When I look at you all I can see the future Yes, it burns so beautiful with you.
Thank you, guys. So for me, it's on now. Um, I've been getting a bunch of help with the mental health side. Um, I reached out to a charity in the UK called BAPAM, which is the British, British Association for Performing Arts Medicine. Um, and I really would encourage other people too, if you feel like you have a problem or you don't even know if you have a problem, reach out to someone. There's lots of charities out there that can help you or someone you love or someone you trust. Because the minute you start speaking about any kind of anxiety or depression or feelings you're having that you just don't feel in control of, the minute you start speaking about them, you take away a bunch of their power and you can start to feel like you're back in control. So that's been amazing for me. And also um, I've been getting vocal coaching and I've been just like writing and singing and recording every day in very, very small baby steps, like, so that gradually I can get better and better and feel more and more empowered to create what I want to create and not worry. Like, what I'm trying to do is not create from a, a place of anxiety, right? I'm trying not to create what I think other people will find impressive or will get me paid or, or, or to, I'm trying not to compare myself to, like, the greats or even my other achievements that I've done, because it's like easy to think, well, I'm the world champion, so I need to also be the world champion, producer, singer, songwriter. Like, it's just too much, it's too much. So I'm trying to just create what feels good to me, and if anybody else likes it, fucking bonus. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> Thank you. And you know what? I realized something about this whole path of most resistance thing. Like for me, like it's, it's important not to like dismiss everything you, you achieve uh, and say it's not good enough. Like everything I did, all this time I spent developing this and all the other cool stuff I've done, like that's all part of me. It's all part of this story that I have to tell. So I don't regret anything about it. And I, I don't know, for this thing about the path of most, most resistance, the hardest thing is just getting started, right? So if you feel like that you're insecure and you don't feel like you can quite do what, what it is you really, really want to do, like embrace that insecurity, right? Make that vulnerability part of what you're trying to create because the minute you get started, once you're off, you'll be flying. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Woo. Thanks for listening to me, guys. It means a lot. It really does. Guys, um, does anyone have any questions that they would like to fire at me? Yes, uh, we do have a microphone. If we can bring it down here, guys, that'd be marvelous. Make some noise for the people in the yellow t-shirts, rocking it right here. Um, you have the tendency to do something with your hand that doesn't hold the mic. Does it help you? Uh, is it imagination? Do you think you play your voice? Or? I love the way you call it a tendency, like, do you think you're doing something? Because you're definitely going mad. No, no, no. So this is, are you talking about this, like, um, when I'm beatboxing and I'm like... Yeah, I mean, it looks like you're actually playing drums. You... Yeah, so all beatboxers do this, um, and it's, we call it the flailing hand of doom. Uh, and it just helps you visualize. So, like, in my head, when I'm beatboxing, I'm playing an NPC. Like it just helps me feel, and also like when you're scratching. Like you just got the turntable there, and that helps you tell that story and create that narrative and help people feel what you're feeling, I guess. Has anyone else got a question? Yeah. Hi, Shlomo. How are you going? That was a brilliant presentation, by the way. Thank you. I'm here. Yeah, oh, great. There he is. And thanks very much for... Uh, allowing us to have an intimate relationship with you because that's tough and uh congratulations my question's about the push actually have you ever used machine uh, and what's the difference and, and, and why push for you um i haven't used machine though it does look well sexy like i would definitely get a proper kit boner for a machine but i haven't ever played with one um so I can't, I'm not sure how to answer that question. Like the reason push was for me, like I tried a launch pad first and I tried um, a couple of other bits, like a Cuneo. But the push, it's just really beautiful. It's, got, it's really sensitive. It's a real instrument. And you can, it's quite difficult to hack in Max for Live. Like there's other things like the, the roadie blocks are much more exposed to Max. You can really see the information a lot more easily. You have to kind of go under the hood a lot more with push. But uh, it's just a great machine. And also, I use it a lot in the studio just for writing in the kind of more traditional way. It's just a lovely instrument. Hey, Dan Quinn from the US. Uh, I just want to say, first of all, this was amazing. And the past hour just totally justified that really long flight over here. So thank you. Um, I 
do something similar to you, not as well as you, with a guitar and a massive foot pedal. And I've done the five parallel loops thing, and it's it's a blast. But you said something that really struck a chord with me about the the problems with the native looper in Ableton. That being said, moving towards Max for live, are you essentially using the stock looper in Ableton as a basis that you are modifying, or did you write your own looper with Max for Live? No, that was my original goal, was to write my own looper within Max for Live, but I realized that's a really long project, and it's a bit like reinventing the wheel. Um, and I, I did make a start on it, but I realized it wasn't, I don't know, for me, I, I kind of do want to do that, but not as much as I want to just make music. I don't actually want to be a developer. I just had to do it so I could do what I needed to do. Do you know what I mean? But I would love to work with someone like, um, with some Mac, if there's any people in here who are like crazy Max heads who really know what they're doing, and they would be interested in developing a looper from scratch, which just was designed by someone like me who knows loopers and who knows lots of people who use them and what they're likely to need, we could make an incredible machine. So if anybody wants to do that, I'm going to be over there at the end. Um, if anyone wants to come and see me, you can have a free download. I've got my tablet. Just put your email in, and it'll, it will email you a free song, and then we'll be, we'll be in touch, because I like having new friends. Uh, but yeah, I, if anyone here is interested in developing an, the most incredible looping device known to mankind, let's do it. Let's do it. A couple more questions. Hi, I'm Sebastian from around here. So I do a, a similar thing also with guitars and um, and vocals, and I always have this um, this thing where you create a lot of music from scratch, but you also bring a lot of things to the stage. And both as a performer and as part of the audience, it's always this um, this watershed between prepared playback and things you do on the stage, like from scratch. What's your how do you balance that? What's your approach to that? Uh, I think it's a constant battle, to be honest with you. Like, I grew up as a jazz nerd, so I was a jazz drummer throughout my, my teens. And, like, for me, it's all about being live. Music is live. Music is interaction between human beings. Like, especially if there's a band on stage and, like, no one knows where it's going to go next. That is the drama for me. So electronic music, which, which was my other real love, I, like, I was born into the prodigy. I just like, grew up with this stuff. And there aren't many acts for me who really nail it with electronic music, who can kind of actually create something live that's actually spontaneous and in reacting to the audience in real time. Um, so for me, this is still a workaround. Like my, my real dream is to create a band which are playing electronic music, but there's no click. So like, if you wanted to just like, slow everything down and just suddenly... <laughs> and then go into a drum and bass version, you just feel it, like you just do it in real time. So um, it's difficult. So you've got to get your clips right. If you can get some really cool effects and stuff that you can do in real time, that's a really lovely way to do it. Um, and then the other thing to do is just stop worrying. Just like, it doesn't matter, just play the song, just like play the clips and then play from your heart. And hopefully it won't matter that it's not live. That's, that's the other approach. Cool, should we take one more question? Uh, yeah, at the back there. Uh, thanks for, for all of the really interesting insight. Um, I hope this question comes out correctly. Um, you mentioned that you, in your in your sort of creative process, you are uh, trying to write and sing at least a little bit every day. Um, and I recently also just started a kind of daily uh, music project like that to try to build a habit. I was wondering if you um, could touch on sort of what your approach to that process is and uh, if you have any tips or tricks or... or pitfalls and that kind of thing okay here's my thing if who here is interested in doing something new that they haven't done before who's kind of wants to be doing that in the next little while like almost everybody feels this feeling and you also feel resistance and you feel like you maybe won't be good enough at doing it so here's a trick right when you start just do five minutes and recognize that what you create in five minutes will be shit it will be so shit because it's the first time you've done something right then what you do is tomorrow you do another five minutes, maybe 10, and it will be ever so slightly less shit. And then all you need to do is repeat until you become the fucking world champion or whatever it is you want to do. But the trick is small and non-judgmental. So I do, I try to break my time up so I don't like just get lost and spend a whole day and then at the end of it be like, oh, I didn't make anything good. I'll do like, I set a timer. I'm really like strict with myself. I set a timer so I'll have 15 minutes that I'm going to just develop this new piece of Max code I'm working on. When the timer goes off, no matter what, where I've got to, I have to stop and I have to pick it up tomorrow. Um, and it's the same with singing, songwriting, like, because I'm, 
I'm, I want to be very multidisciplinary. So to master lots of disciplines at once takes lots of time and lots of patience and kindness to yourself. So I'd say, don't try and do too much. Do a tiny bit and don't judge it. If it's shit, that's fine. The next day it's going to be even, even slightly less more shit and you'll gradually become amazing. So yeah, as my friend Adam here says, suck till you don't. It's a, it's a really good bit of advice. Um, let me see, what time is it now? We've got time, because I kind of want to take a question, but I also would love to like finish with a song. I don't know. Would it be okay to finish with one more thing? You don't sound that fast. Should we do one more thing? Okay, thank you guys. You've been absolutely beautiful today. It's been really amazing to just connect with so many people in this place. Like, imagine a whole fucking complex of people who just want to learn about music and geek out. Like, what are, this is like Mecca for me. So I'm going to be around the whole weekend, chatting, exploring, learning. Come and find me. I'm going to be over here if you want to say hi and get a free download or anything. If anyone's got any more questions. But thank you so much. My name is Ben S. Clay Shlomo. I'm going to have this music for you real soon. Freddie, kill that front light. Kill that front This song is called Superhuman and it kind of summarizes everything I've said to you today. One more face to pixelate, slip back disgrace, not thinking straight.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You've got to be beautiful. My name is S.K. Schlemmer. Have a wonderful loop. Peace and love. Come and say hi. I'll be just down here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.